don't get into community work if you're not passionate about it. Because you're going to be disappointed and you're not going to make much impact and you're going to soon walk away as his sponges. Uh, you really have to be passionate and you have don't think it's a 9 to 5 job uh, because sometimes you have to be, in fact most of the times you have to be prepared to take things with you at home and be prepared to do things at the weekend and evenings and you have to be a great motivator of people because if you do not have a good team around you you're not going to have much impact because Bangladesh is support center, I wouldn't say we're successful I'd say we're to some extent effective because we've got a fantastic team I work with a group of uh, people around me who all work part time but they're really passionate about what they do uh, and we want to bring about positive change. Because in the early Bangladeshi settlers came to it soon, soon after the Second World War, as did a, 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 a people from the Caribbean. They worked in factories and so on, worked really hard, and I often say it is these people who put the great into Great Britain, because nobody wanted in those days to do those jobs. Uh, running, make sure that train was running okay, and a uh, lot more factory in Stowe Market was doing fine, the roads were built and so on. And it is these people really worked hard. And when from second and third generation of Bangladeshis being brought up and educated here, uh, we wanted a group of volunteers got together, so we want to do something about the needs of the community and the younger people and the women and the elders. And that's how this project started. Um, my job was when I started working here was to how do we take this forward? Um, and it was challenging, really challenging. Um, you need a team that's got, uh, that includes great motivators, good communicators, both written and verbal, but you also need people who can liaise with a whole range of people. Pick the phone up, explain uh, uh, your problems and difficulties to potential funders, to people who have an access to services. So we never do anything at the center because somebody comes to us with funding. We never do that. After. I regularly turn away funders. That's because what we do at the center is determined by what is needed at the community rather than just because somebody's come to us with a carrot. That's why we need all of our projects and services are always subscribed. Because it's the people who said to us they want this. Or whether it is supplementary school on a Saturday afternoon in St. Helen Primary School, it's a free supplementary school for primary school children. There's 30 children on books and they learn maths and English by two qualified teachers. Uh, or whether it is a befriending scheme going into help into homes of elderly people uh, and giving them support they need because they can't get to, get to us, climb 15 stairs and, 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 and receive this uh, service. Or whether it is English language classes, which is again always subscribed and the room is packed on a Monday afternoon. We've got more than half a dozen projects at the centre, uh, funded by a whole range of organisations. And it is very important at this point that you diversify your sources of funding. Because if you don't, if you rely totally on the council to fund you, and if the council cuts it, you're in trouble. If you rely totally on uh, a good people like Jamie, and after three years, if they say we can't fund you, you're again in trouble. So try to diversify your sources of funding, keep things manageable, um, and that's what we do. That's what we do at the center, small projects by part-time people committed who wants to bring about a change. And then when you deliver well, your funders will let you and come back to you again and again. So you promi promise small, deliver big. And you will see that your funders will like you and want to come back to you again. Uh, we've got at the moment, last time I had looked at our data, database, we've got about between 40 and 45 different nationalities accessing our services. Because my number one priority was when I joined this organization, was its name, was a problem for me. This is Bangladeshi Support Center. And I said to the people who founded this, why Bangladeshi? And they said, look, it's Bangladeshi people got together and founded this. I said, well, my challenge for me, Moshlum, is going to be transcend this name. Because I grew up in Lancashire and saw how segregation can create problems for our societies and communities. 
or into your ghettos and forget about the rest of the society, whether it's Oldham or whether it's Burnley or other place or Halifax in Yorkshire. There's problems. I believe in multiculturalism, it does work because nobody else can, has so far come with a better alternative. The French haven't, the German haven't, the Italians haven't, the Spanish haven't. So this is the best model, one of the best we've got. It does work if it's, uh, if it's practiced properly. So my challenge was to make this, was to make the organization inclusive. We've got about more than 40 different nationalities accessing our services. Uh, our multicultural festival is, uh, re reflects that because we, we, wanted to re we wanted to do an event in Suffolk that was inclusive. And we've got more than 8,000 people attend that every year of more than 50 different nationalities. Um, and we, so you have to be committed, you have to have a clear plan, you need a team because one man cannot do everything. Make sure you audit your, we need to audit our skills. Who's good at what? And make sure you get people in your team who've got a whole range of skills. And it, then it's possible. There is funding out there. We need to tap into it. You know, councils will do things and support you, but they're not going to, they're not going to, you know, do things for you. That's the only, that's the probably the biggest lesson I've learned. Is they will not do things, that our communities have to do things for themselves. With support from other funders and councils and other people. So which means we have, if we have problems or issues in our community, we must take responsibility for it. We must take responsibility for it and we try to do something about it with policy makers and everybody else. Uh, sometimes you do well, sometimes you will not do well, sometimes you not succeed, but don't give up. And I say the same thing to my colleagues every single day at, at the center. So get on with it, don't complain. And if this is not for you, then let's look. It's time to move on. I get honest with you. You have to be passionate if you don't if you want to do community work. Otherwise, go it a day and uh, find something else to do. I know I know this is very uh, this is horrible. Uh, perhaps not the nicest thing to say, but I'm being very brutally honest here. Community work is about passion and commitment and hard work. And the reason is, we work with the community that's 9 to 5. Don't, if, you, if you organize anything 9 to 5, nobody will attend. Because they're in the restaurants. More than 100 uh, Bangladeshi restaurants in Suffolk. <laughs> uh, loads of uh, Chinese restaurants in Suffolk. And if you organize 9 to 5, nobody will attend. Which means we have to fit around their lifestyle and organize things at weekends, evenings. So you have to do your homework properly to make your activities successful. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and uh, if anyone's got any questions or discuss anything, happy to, uh, happy to discuss that afterwards. Thank you. Bye-bye.